Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. The title of today's Bible study is There's an Economic Collapse Coming. How should we prepare? Today, I'm going to share with you some practical things that we all should be doing right now in preparation for the coming economic collapse. Now, for those of you who don't understand what that is, it's simply the debt that the United States of America is in, it's referred to as the debt bubble. That debt is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually it's going to just spiral out of control and the whole economy is gonna crash. And when that takes place, there's gonna be chaos in the streets. There's gonna be wide panic among people. There's gonna be looting, there's gonna be murdering. It's gonna be all hell on earth in light of what the scriptures have predicted. These things have to happen. So I'm going to share some practical things that you can do to prepare for the economic collapse. And then I'm going to share the most important things that you need to be doing, which is spiritual. Um, so some of the things that you and I need to be doing right now, and a lot of people are doing this, is stocking up supplies. Water is one of the main things that you should be getting right now. Not just drinking water, but distilled water. Because when the electricity has failed, when there's no electricity and there's no power and, and, and the water the, um, companies and all of that stuff is going to be shut down, you're going to need that water to flush your toilets, to bathe, brush your teeth, and clean. So it's important that you start stocking up water. Now, if you don't have money like I don't, you do what you can. You start buying a little right now and just stocking it up. You're going to need these things. And this is something you should have anyway. A lot of things that I'm sharing in this video are things that you should already have anyway because of natural disasters. Anything could happen. The Bible clearly teaches that being prepared is something that God would have us be. Because in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 through 8, the Holy Bible says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. That means you lazy person. Look at that little ant. Consider her ways and be wise. So God is saying, look at that little ant that I created and watch what that ant does. And you can learn something from those ants. Verse 7, he says, Which having no guide overseer, or ruler, verse 8, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So the Lord put it in the little ant to take advantage of the summer when everything is okay to be out gathering food for the winter. And so the Lord says we can learn from that ant that he has created. So we should always have supplies stored for any disaster. 
but I'm specifically talking about the economic collapse that's inevitable. I can't tell you exactly when it's coming, but it is coming. It's coming because there are people empowered, known as the Bilderberg Group, or the Illuminati, if you will, who are agents of the devil and who have been waiting for the right crisis to bring in their new world order. It's going to happen. The Bible predicts these things. And like I said at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about the importance of being prepared spiritually. All right. So water is one of the main things you should be stocking up on right now. And then, of course, food. Now, there are a lot of people running out and buying meat and other things that require refrigeration. This is not wise because when the electricity goes, all that food that you got in those freezer are going to spoil. You won't be able to eat it all in one day. So it would be wise to get food and store up food that comes in cans or those dry foods that can last a while on a shelf. And if you're getting things like flour and sugar and wheat and rice, make sure you buy these plastic Tupperware containers to store that food in, because if you don't, the mice and the insects will get at it. So that's something you should be storing up right now. You're going to need a way to cook the food when the gas is shut down. So they have these little portable stoves with these propane tanks that you can use hook up to it and you can cook. You need to get so many of those. You know, get the little stove and get, uh, I, I would say at least six months worth supplies. That's what I would say. And have that waiting. You're also going to need light. So a good thing to have is flashlights and lots of batteries. And as a backup, candles and matches and kerosene lamps. And, of course, the fuel you need to run those kerosene lamps. You're going to need these things. So you ought to have that stuff stocked up in your house. And like I said, if you can't afford to go buy it all at once, just get a little at a time. And you need to start right away. Some people are able to afford gas generators. So, you know, if you can do that, then, hey, go for it. There's nothing wrong with having that if you can afford it and they can come in handy. Um, another thing you're going to need is first aid kits. And I mean more than one. Get you a couple of first aid kits. Open them up. See what's in there. And then go buy all the stuff that's inside of them again. That way when, they, when, when you use up the stuff inside, you'll have that stuff to replace it with. You need to have a couple of those in your house, depending on the size of your family. Board games. Very important because... If they declare martial law and you're in your house, you're confined to your house, you're going to need something sometimes to give you a little a leisure. You know, you won't have any television, you won't have any internet, you won't have any cell phone if all that power is shut down. So board games, Uno, Connect Four, Checkers, Monopoly, things like that, that you could play uh, you and your family or you and your spouse or you and your friends, whoever you... Uh, uh, confined, <laughs> in whoever you're confined with, you'll need those things. Toiletries, and that covers a lot of things, okay? Toilet paper, uh, paper towels, napkins, the um, stuff you need to clean your toilet and clean your house. You want to try to be sanitary because when you're not sanitary, that breeds disease, and that could be a big um thing that really takes you out real quick, okay? So you want to make sure you have a lot of that and cleaning agents. Now, I can't think of everything. You can uh, add to this list some of the things that you think you would need, but I'm just trying to give you the basics, the things that you should have stocked up in your house. And then, regardless of what people say, it is God's, you have a God-given right to protect yourself and your property. Oh, yes, you do. There's nothing wrong with you having a gun for the purpose of protecting your family and yourself because during that time, there will be people 
who will be trying to break in your house to steal what you have. And then some are what you call crisis opportunists. These are immoral, ungodly people who just wanted to come in and harm you anyway. And the only reason they didn't do it is because, you know, when things are normal, they know the police would come and get them. But during a time like this, the law enforcement, the law enforcement age officers are going to be spread thin as well as the National Guard. So people like that look for crisis and collapse to take advantage of people and to do wicked things that they want to do. So it would be wise for you to have some kind of weapons to protect yourself from people like that. You know, knives, if you don't believe in guns, get you some knives, uh, get you a crowbar, a bat, you know, things that you could use to fend them off when they're trying to come into your dwelling to do you harm, okay? Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, you'll have some people out there who will disagree with me, but they are biblically illiterate, okay? All throughout the Bible, God always had that provision for his people to defend themselves. Oh, yes, he did. I'm going to give you one. In the book of Esther, a wicked man who hated the Jews, who was in a position to influence the king, persuaded the king to have a law that all the Jews were going to be killed on a certain day. And the Lord used a young lady named Esther to become that king's wife and inform him of the plans of the wicked man who had persuaded him to get this law where all the Jews were going to be killed. And that same king, being moved by God, made it a law for all the Jews and all the provinces to be able to defend themselves. So that is just one example of your God-given right to defend yourself. So, now that we're done with that, I want to talk about the most important thing that you and I need to be doing to prepare, not only for an economic collapse, but any natural disaster of the end of the world or whatever. And that is to make sure that you learn what the Holy Bible has to say about God, his Savior Son, and the things that have to transpire in this world before Christ comes to establish his kingdom here on earth. And that's why in the, uh, in the Bible book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the Apostle Paul, being guided by God's Holy Spirit, wrote, Study to show thyself approved unto God, or yourself approved unto God. A workman, and it also refers to women, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is vital, my brothers and sisters, and people who are not believers, that you learn the Holy Bible. The Bible is not just another work of literature. The Bible is the inspired word of Almighty God, and it is crucial that you know what the Bible says. So this is the number one thing you can do to prepare. Start taking in knowledge of our Heavenly Father's Word. And you're going to learn in the Holy Bible of the most important message to mankind. And that is that the Son of God, the one we call Jesus Christ in the English tongue, whose true name is Yeshua HaMashiach in the Hebrew, he died for our sins so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins and be in the position to be saved into his eternal kingdom. In the Holy Bible, in the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 18. 
He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And I'm here to tell you there is nothing more important in this temporary world than the gospel. And the word gospel means good news. The good news is that God Almighty, Jehovah, sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world that they created for the sole purpose of dying for our sins. That means everything you and I have done wrong from birth so we could be forgiven and be in the position to be saved into his eternal kingdom. It's vital that you know this message. And when you learn about the Son of God and God's Spirit comes upon you and enlightens you to this truth, then you have to continue to study and learn more and more about God. And then you'll learn about all the details of the things that have to happen before Jesus comes. Now, I want to recommend a Bible study that I have titled, Who is Jesus Christ? Because it's vital that you know who Jesus is. Also, because I believe we're coming toward this time, you need to know what is the Great Tribulation. I have a Bible study video on that as well. And then, I think you need to know right now, it's urgent that you understand who is the Antichrist? And last but not least, what is the mark of the beast? Very important that you understand that. So I'm giving you these things to get started with. But I want you to understand that studying of our Father's Word is a lifelong goal. It's something you and I need to do our entire life because the Lord will constantly reveal more and more to us as we study and he will give us the power through his spirit to be conformed to the things that we're learning. So we will be in the position to be saved into his eternal kingdom. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton 1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630 Four four one four five six three. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, Share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, 
These shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godwear.store. So please check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.